Back in August of 2019, Google wrote a blog post about building a more private web and aspirations of how they're going to improve user privacy in Chrome and Chromium. Now, some more of the details have been thrashed out recently, so in this video, I thought I'd take a look at it and just what they're trying to do. Now, privacy is paramount to us in everything we do, so today we're announcing a new initiative to develop a set of open standards to fundamentally enhance privacy on the web. We're calling this a privacy sandbox. There's various items in this blog, but a couple of the items I'll be focusing on is browser fingerprinting and blocking of third-party cookies. So large-scale blocking of cookies undermines people's privacy by encouraging opaque techniques such as fingerprinting. With fingerprinting, developers have found ways to use tiny bits of information that vary between users, such as what device they have or what fonts they have installed to generate a unique identifier which can then be used to match across websites. Unlike cookies, users cannot clear their fingerprints and therefore cannot control how their information is collected. We think that subverts users' choice and is wrong. Second, blocking cookies without another way to deliver relevant ads significantly reduces publishers' primary means of funding, which jeopardizes the future of the vibrant web. Many publishers have been able to continue to invest in freely accessible content because they can be confident that their advertising will fund their costs. If this funding is cut, we are concerned that we will see a much less accessible content for everyone. After initial dialogue with the web community, we are confident that continued iteration and feedback, privacy preserving and open standard mechanisms like the privacy sandbox can sustain a healthy ad supported web in a way that will render third party cookies obsolete. We plan to phase out support for third party cookies in Chrome. Our intention is to do this within two years. Chrome will limit insecure cross-site tracking starting in February by treating cookies that don't include a same site label as first party only and require cookies labeled for third party use to be accessed over HTTPS. This will make third party cookies more secure and give users more precise browser cookie controls. At the same time, we're developing techniques to detect and mitigate covert tracking and workarounds by launching new anti-fingerprinting measures to discourage these kind of deceptive and intrusive techniques. And we hope to launch these measures later in the year. Google's fear that choking off third-party cookies will immediately move tracking companies, which remember it owns, to more subversive tracking methods like fingerprinting. The Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, scoffed at this notion back in August when Google first unveiled the privacy sandbox, calling it frankly a mess and reminding us that Google tracks two thirds of the web. And I'll take a look at that EFF blog later in this video. It also pointed out that Mozilla already blocks trackers. And there's a whole write up about this privacy sandbox in the Chromium project from Google. A blocking third party cookies does go a long way to stop tracking, and it's something I've done for years. But there are always some sites dependent on using third party cookies, such as YouTube and some of the other Google services, so the irony there. But yeah, there's also other techniques of identifying a user, and this is called browser fingerprinting. So, browser fingerprinting is a powerful method that websites use to collect information about your browser type and version, as well as your operating system, active plugins, time zone, language, screen resolution, and various other active settings. These data points might seem generic at first and don't necessarily look tailored to identify one specific person. However, there's a significantly small chance that for another user to have 100% matching browser information. And there's a statistic there that shows that only about one in 286,000 other browsers will share the same fingerprint as another user. Now you might be wondering why this is done and why your data is so incredibly valuable to these companies. The advertising industry and marketing machines love your data. They'll do anything to get their hands on your data in order to track your online activities. Tracking methods and data collection is extremely valuable because it allows advertising businesses to create a profile based on your data. The more data these businesses have, the more accurately they can target you with advertisements, which indirectly means higher revenue for the company. But fortunately, it's not all bad. There are a couple of positives. Browser fingerprinting is also used to identify the characteristics of botnets, as well as online banking security systems. So yeah, there is some protection there that banks can use it. But yeah, the worst part is the data tracking. And there's this website, amiunique.org. 
And if you take a look at it, uh, you may find you're more unique than you think. And yeah, I certainly am. So am I unique? Yes, you can be tracked. Your full fingerprint is unique among the 15,081 collected so far in the past seven days. Oh dear, that's no good, is it, for me? And it shows all these various points that are collected for data. So you've got user agents, you cannot stop that being sent, or you could spoof it into something else, depending on what you do to your browser. A lot of the other items here, language, no, you can't really change that. Cookies enabled, no. <laughs> I'm using Firefox here, and I only allow cookies by exception. So yeah, for most sites, cookies will be blocked, and that immediately puts me into 1.57% of other users. Oh well. Canvas fingerprinting is something very difficult to stop and very unique and identifiable. Use of ad block? No, I don't in this browser. Do not track? Yeah. Try and ask for do not tracking. And yeah, various uh, other settings. Oh, the screen position. So apparently I'm 1.86% of users who have <laughs> the first screen being available at 1920 pixels or where the browser is, because this is on my right hand monitor. Uh, 1920 pixels across. It's got some information about the hardware. So yeah, as you can see, there's quite a lot of audio data. Yeah, there's quite a lot that shows my browser could be unique without the use of cookies. So how much of an impact will it really make about blocking third party cookies? And you can see that already you can be tracked. But looking at the EFFs article, the bad conversation measurement, perhaps the most fleshed out proposal in the sandbox of when well, this is Google's proposal, is a conversation measurement API. This is trying to tackle a problem as old as online ads. How can you know whether people are clicking on an ad ultimately buy a product is advertised? Currently, third party cookies do most of the heavy lifting. A third party advertiser serves an ad on behalf of the marketer and sets a cookie on its own site. The marketer includes a snippet of code which causes the user's browser to send the cookie set earlier back to the advertiser. The advertiser knows when the user sees an ad and it knows when the same user later visits the marketer's site and makes a purchase. In this way, the advertisers can attribute ad impressions to page views and purchases that occur days or weeks later. Now, some of the life expectancy of cookies can be, well, months or years. Without third-party cookies, the attribution gets a little more complicated. Even if an advertiser can observe traffic around the web, without a way to link ad impressions to page views, it won't know how effective its campaigns are. After Apple started cracking down on advertisers' use of cookies with intelligent tracking prevention, it also proposed a privacy-preserving ad attribution solution. Now Google is proposing something similar. Basically, advertisers will be able to mark their ads with metadata, including a destination URL, a reporting URL, and a field for extra impression data, likely a unique ID. The problem is the impression data. Apple's proposal allows marketers to store just six bits of information in a campaign ID. That is a number between one and 64. This is just enough to differentiate between ads for different products or between campaigns using different media. On the other hand, Google's ID can contain 64 bits of information, a number between 1 and 18 quintillion. This will allow advertisers to attach a unique ID to each and every ad impression they serve, and potentially to connect ad conversations with individual users. If a user interacts with multiple ads from the same advertiser around the web, these IDs, these IDs can help the advertiser build a profile of the user's browsing habits. Oh great, so this basically does nothing to preserve a user's privacy. Tracking prevention and Firefox's enhanced tracking protection have severely curtailed third-party trackers' access to data. Meanwhile, the users and lawmakers continue to demand stronger privacy protections from big tech. While Chrome still dominates the browser market, Google might suspect the days of unlimited access to third-party cookies are numbered. As a result, Google has apparently decided to defend its business model on two fronts. First, by continuing to argue that third-party cookies are actually fine, and companies like Mo Mozilla and Apple, and companies like Apple and Mozilla who would restrict trackers' access to user data will end up harming user privacy. This argument is absurd. As long as Google remains the most popular browser in the world, 
Google will be able to single-handedly dictate whether cookies remain a viable option for tracking most users. Now, at the same time, it's hedging its bets on the privacy sandbox proposals for conversation measurement with alternatives aimed to replace the third-party cookies. And the final note here, which I believe is very important, the sandbox isn't about your privacy. It's about Google's bottom line. At the end of the day, Google is an advertising company that happens to make a browser. I understand what Google are trying to do here. They're trying to play catch up with what the other browser companies are already doing. But if they're forcing, uh, let's say, unfavorable settings onto these uh, companies that are trying to acquire your data, then it's going to become more difficult for the users to actually block this kind of data from being collected. Look, if you want to go and stop third party cookies on your browser, at the moment, it's really easy to do. And it does actually make quite an impact to the level of tracking. It doesn't stop it completely, as I showed with the other data you can acquire from a browser, but it does make a difference. Now, if these unfavorable settings are forced, let's say going back to the days of uh, the do not track header. Now, Microsoft forced that to be on by default in Internet Explorer and Edge. And what happened as a result? Well, all companies go, well, I'm just ignoring it then because uh, the user hasn't necessarily set that setting. It's uh, the browser manufacturer has set that and they've just decided not to agree with it. So in this case, I don't think what Google is doing is a really good idea. And it's not going to hurt their bottom line. They're still going to be able to track you and they are the most prominent tracker. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this topic? Do you think it should be left for the user or is uh, what Google is doing here really going to make a positive difference? Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Bye.